Scano, good morning, Zach. Thank you for taking you the time to uh, share your COVID-19 vaccine experience with the Six Nations community. Before we get started with the interview, uh, could you please provide us with a brief introduction of yourself? Sure. Uh, my name is Zach Miller. I'm the administrative director of the family health team in the community. Um, I've also been a part of the incident management team uh, over this past year and helped with the vaccine rollout in the community as well, too. So, um, yeah, work within primary care and leadership in that end, um, but then I've also been helping over this past year with the pandemic response on Six Nations as well. Wonderful. Thank you for the introduction and thank you for your services with the healthcare industry during this pandemic. Those, those healthcare workers like yourself are definitely um, helping keep us safe. So we, we appreciate all, all of your dedication and hard work. Thank you. So with that, can you briefly share with us your COVID-19 vaccine experience? Sure. Um, well, I'll actually go back a bit. So um, in the fall of last year, um, myself and my family, we ended up actually getting COVID. Um, we got it through, uh, as far as we know, we got it through a, another family member and that individual got it from another community member. And um, it spread quite quickly once our, our family had it. And we were, at that time, everyone was in their bubbles. And, and that sort of thing, their um, social bubbles, they were called back then. And um, because one family member caught it in our social bubble, it spread very quickly. Um, <clears throat> so for myself, I had symptoms, I believe, for 11 days. Um, I had all the symptoms that you would see on that sheet, except for shortness of breath. So I was quite fortunate in that sense. I didn't have shortness of breath and I needed to be hospitalized or that. But um, yeah, I had a lot of the symptoms. And um and then it, I, it took probably, even after I was cleared by public health, I still wasn't feeling the greatest because um, once, once you're cleared, it, it simply means you're no longer infectious. But um, once I was cleared by public health, it, it took me another two to three months to feel a bit more normal again. Um, so yeah, it, it was just not a, not a great experience. It wasn't, a lot of people have said, oh, oh, I've had a bad cough in the past, or I have a constant cough, or I always feel tired, or I have joint pain or that sort of thing. I'm like, no, you don't get it. Like someone of my age shouldn't have that sort of, those sort of symptoms and have it that strongly. And um, so, yeah, it was, it was not a fun experience at all kind of thing. I would, I mean, that's one of the biggest things I would just advise people to follow the precautions, wear masks when you're outside of your home and, and only meet with your, your immediate household at this time. And, um, but yeah, I mean, in my the sense, I, the context that we were in at the time, the, we were just even before the second wave before then and um, coming out of the summer. And uh, like I said, our family was meeting in a smaller group at that time. Um, and yeah, it, once, once one of us had it, we all got it. So it, it went really quickly. And that was even before the variants came around. Um, so yeah, I, I mean, coming out, out of that and into the new year and, and information on the vaccines coming in and everything else, I, I knew I wanted to get vaccinated as soon as possible. And um, I, really, really pushed for making sure our, our community was able to get vaccinated quickly and, and that sort of thing. And um, so, yeah, it was, it was great once I was able to get vaccinated. Um, I got vaccinated back in my first dose, I believe was back in March. Um, and then I got my second dose a couple of weeks ago in April. Um, when I got my first dose, because I already had COVID, um, I got it on the Thursday, I remember of that week and by the Friday, the next day on the Friday morning, um, started feeling a bit feverish. Um, and I was like, okay, this is normal. Like it's not a big deal. And then by the evening I felt full out, like I was getting COVID again in, in terms of not, not as extreme or not in the variety of symptoms I had, but definitely felt strong fever and um, the muscle aches and joint pain came back, which I hadn't had since I had COVID. And I was basically just laying in bed and trying to get through it and taking Tylenol and Advil and that sort of thing and um, drinking lots of liquids to um, help my body um, get through it and that. So, I mean, being in healthcare and, and just knowing that that's a normal immune response that just shows that your body is um, accepting the vaccine and, and responding normally to show that it's being triggered and that sort of thing. And then having COVID, it, it's almost like it, it kick starts your immune system again um, in terms of um, reactivating it as it was when you had COVID to help fight it again, but it's just sort of adding that immunity even stronger. So 
Um, anyways, I knew all that, but obviously you can know all the facts about COVID and, and all that. And then when you feel like you have those symptoms, it, it, it's a different experience. But the thing for me is it, it only lasted for like, that was the Friday evening that I, I felt the worst um, and slept through the night and felt fine the next morning and a um, bit tired the next day still. But by the Sunday, I was I was back to normal again, sort of thing. Whereas when I had COVID, it was um, it's kind of interesting because I started feeling sick on a, on a Friday as well. Um, and that, that lasted for a week and a half of having off and on symptoms of everything you can think of. Um, and then taking two to three months to feel better. So having a vaccine and um, feeling maybe horrible for 24, 48 hours compared to feeling brutal from COVID for two to three months and, and not knowing even, I don't even know the long-term effects. No one does right now of COVID and what the implications are for the future and, and that sort of thing. So I'd way rather get the vaccines and have side effects than have COVID with the symptoms. So um, yeah, so that was the first dose. And then the second dose um, got within the, the, a lot of time period, um, three weeks, I believe it was for myself. And uh, yeah, I got the second dose and felt fine. Um, and the second dose was a bit more mild. So it was a bit more mild fe feeling of a fever and and that, and I actually didn't have any of the muscle aches or joint pain this time, which is really nice. Um, but the thing with that, it, it for myself, it, it tended to last a bit longer this time. It lasted for a few days. Um, it was like three or four, as opposed to the first, which was like one or two days of the side effects. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, it was even, it, even within that, it was still shorter than having COVID symptoms and how brutal that experience was. So um so yeah, it, it was in the in overall summary. It was it was still better um, for myself at least for having more moderate symptoms with COVID when I actually had COVID compared to the vaccine. It was still a much better experience getting the vaccine and having some mild side effects as opposed to having COVID last fall. So, thanks for sharing. Welcome. Before you received your vaccination, did you have any hesitancies at all? Um, well, I mean, I, I think a lot of us, even in healthcare, have had have hesitancies just around even the mRNA um, vaccines and, and that sort of thing. And so for myself, I really wanted to do my homework on it. And I looked at all the different research articles I could and, and looked at the different news stories and looked at what was happening in other countries that were ahead of us in the vaccine rollout. Um, for the mRNA vaccines, for example, they were already getting rolled out in Israel at the time and, and different parts of the States and Europe and that sort of thing. So um so for myself, it was interesting to see what was going on in those countries. And um, I mean, there's a lot of videos going around with a lot of just um, false claims and, and even physicians declaring certain things in these videos. And it's just a lot of it, it just isn't evidence-based. So, um, so yeah, it was interesting to see some of those and even ask my own questions about that and that sort of thing. But in the end, even, I mean, another question I used to get from people is why, why are you getting the vaccine if you already had COVID? Like, don't you have immunity and that sort of thing? And I'm like, well, I mean, yeah, technically you have a fairly decent immunity after having COVID and, but we, we just don't know how long that lasts. Like, I mean, we, all of us have only been going through this for like 14, 15 months now. Um, so we, we just don't know how long the immunity lasts after having COVID yet to some certainty. So yeah, I, for myself, I just, I didn't want to go through COVID again, and I would way rather have the vaccine um, than trying to de depend on my own hesitancies and that sort of thing. And yeah, I just, I know knew even with the mRNA vaccines, after asking some questions to some physicians I trust and, and that sort of thing, um, and just others to, like I said, do my own research on it, I, I found that I was fully comfortable with getting the mRNA vaccine. And um, yeah, I just ended up going for it and wanted to do it even just to Set it a bit of an example in that as well too and, and letting people know even if you've had COVID that um, yeah it's okay like I, I, I had COVID myself and, and got the vaccine and yeah the side effects weren't the greatest but it definitely wasn't as bad as when I had COVID so. What would you say to someone who is on the fence about getting the vaccine? Um, I guess I would say to them like just to really look through the information and the facts as much like the, any any vaccine is a personal choice, and I, I think what's difficult with these vaccines is they're very um, they're very heightened because we're in a pandemic, right? Like so, everything's political, everything's for the economy, and, and it's very political and um, just the health and and all that sort of thing. But 
Really, I mean, it comes down to a personal choice. Um, but with these vaccines, a sort of interesting piece because we are in a pandemic, um, it also impacts the community as well too. So if we don't have the people, our, our people vaccinated in the community, we're, we're just gonna be going through this pandemic longer sort of thing. So um, I, I think for myself, I, I would just say like, how long are we willing to live with all of these restrictions and, and not even just the restrictions, but living with the risk of catching COVID um, and end up being hospitalized or, or um, even, even worse and that, right? So the vaccine's meant to protect you from getting severe symptoms. Um, so I, I would just say like, it, it's, it's best to get it. Like pandemics don't last forever um, kind of thing. Like there's, there's never been a pandemic that's lasted forever, which is evidence from the fact we're not dealing with pandemics from the past still. Um, but yeah, they don't last forever. And one of the main ways that they're, they're stopped is by a lot of people getting vaccinated. Um, for that specific uh, disease that's going around. So for us, it's COVID and, um, and yeah, there, there's a number of vaccines now that are approved in Canada. So I would just encourage what, whatever vaccines available to you to, to get it. So. Thanks for sharing that. Why, why did you get your, your vaccine? What was the main reason for you? I think for myself, it was um, not wanting to go through that experience again of getting COVID. Um, again, it was like, yeah, I'm a, I'm a younger individual. I, I'm not in that high risk category in the sense of being hospitalized, but COVID still knocked me out. Like it was still brutal. It wasn't just your common cold or, um, I mean, a lot of people say the flu is bad. It's not as bad as the flu, but I mean, the flu is, is a brutal disease when you get it, <laughs> if you get the full influenza, but, um, for COVID it was a, uh, yeah, it was just not not a great experience sort of thing so for myself i um wanted to get it to make sure if i ever did happen to catch it again over the coming year year or two that um i, I wouldn't have stronger um stronger symptoms more severe symptoms and that sort of thing and with the potential of being hospitalized and such so i i preferred to get the vaccine and and yeah make sure i could keep contributing the ways i, I can to my community and um being there for my family and friends and everything else, right? So um, yeah, for myself, it was, a, it was a personal health choice in that sense. Um, and yeah, I mean, there's, there's limited evidence right now, but there is some evidence that the vaccines also help once your population reaches a certain point with even blocking some tr transmission as well too. So um, again, I just, I wanted to contribute to us getting out of this pandemic and the quickest way to do that is getting vaccinated. Now that you've been fully vaccinated, do you recommend to others to get the COVID-19 vaccine? Yeah, for sure. Um, like, like I've said throughout this interview, it's just, it's not worth getting COVID. You don't, you don't know, even if you think you're super healthy and fit. I, I know people that, I know someone who was a marathon runner and had to be hospitalized from this. So it doesn't matter how strong or fit or healthy you think you may are, you don't know what COVID could do to you if you ended up catching it. So, um, yeah, whatever, like the message that's going around the country right now is whatever vaccines available to you to take it. So, I, I mean, if you have multiple comorbidities and complexities and you don't know, like you can always talk to your family doctor still and, and get their advice on it. Um, but yeah, I, it's it's worth getting the vaccine once it's available to you and once you're able to and, um, and, and that. So, and within our community, everyone's eligible right now to get the vaccine. So I would encourage as many people as possible to get that vaccine. Thank you so much for taking the time, Zach, to share your COVID-19 vaccine experience Welcome. with the community.